Hey there, Math Hoppers. In this video lesson, we'll learn how to complete long division and we'll learn how to check our answer with multiplication. All right, remember when we learned fact families, we learned nine times three was 27. So what that meant was if we had nine groups of three things, we had 27 of those things. Therefore, if we took those 27 things and put them in groups of three, there'd be nine groups of them. And if we took 27 things and divided into groups of nine, there'd be three groups with nine in each. So we learned that division and multiplication were opposite operations, or they undid each other. Well, we can use multiplication to check long division too. Just takes a little longer because long division is longer by nature. And if our quotient has a remainder, then we have to do something a little extra, but it's not too bad. And what the heck word did I just use? Quotient. It's a funny word, and it just means the answer to a division problem. And you're going to hear it over and over again, so let's just get used to calling the answer to a division problem a quotient. All right, so we're going to divide and use multiplication to check, and we have a four-digit number divided by a two-digit number. So let's first remember that we could write 6,691 divided by 28 as a fraction, right? We could write this as 6,691 all over 28. A fraction bar is just shorthand for division. They got lazy, and I, by they, I mean mathematicians somehow, some way over the years got lazy writing this division bar or this division symbol, and they turned it into a division bar. This little slash stands for division. Okay, so knowing that, setting this up might be easier. You have to set up your division. The first number goes in the box, or you could always remember the top number in the fraction goes in the box, 6,691 divided by 28. If 6,691 is being divided up, it goes in the box. So the first number or the number on the top in the fraction goes in the box. So we set it up like this. So let's just learn some formal words that you're gonna hear in class. The number being divided that goes in the box. That's called the dividend. The number that is going into that number in the box, that's 6,691, it goes on the outside, right? 28, we want to see how many times 28 goes into 6,691. So it's going into that number, so it's on the outside, and we call that the divisor. So what we're trying to do is find out how many times 28 goes into 6,691, or Basically, how many groups of 28 can be made from 6,691 things? Okay, so let's get into division. Here's our problem. Now, when you first say this, you're going to say, okay, I don't know how many times 20, 28 goes into 6691, right? Because it's a huge number and 28 is really small. So we're going to take this step by step. So we're first going to look at the first digit here. We're going to say, well, how many times does 28 go into 6? Well, guess what? 28 can't go into any number that is smaller than 28. So it can't go into 6 at all. So we're going to say, okay, forget 6. How about 66? How about we take these two numbers together? Can it go into 66? And that's the first thing we're going to work with. Now, some teachers would like you to put an X over that first 6 to indicate that you're, you can't go into 6, that 28 can't go into 6. Whether you do or not, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure that when you're putting your first number from your answer, you're putting it over this second six. You're putting it over the last digit that you're going into. So if you want to get in the habit of putting the X there, that's fine. Okay, so now we have to figure out how many times 28 goes into 66 without going over. That's way easier than figuring out how many times it goes into 6,691. So let's just do some multiplication. 28 times 2 is 56. Well, that's not 66. Let's try 3. 28 times 3 is 84. 84 has gone too far. It is over 66, right? 84 is too big. Therefore, I'm going to say 56 is the number I want, but I want 2 because 28 times 2 is 56. So 56 is as close as I'm getting to 66 without going over. So where does that 2 go? Well, let's bring the problem down. That 2 goes over the 66. It goes over that second 6. This is saying 28 goes into 66 two times without going over. It didn't go in evenly, and we're going to get to that. Now what we're going to do is multiply 
28 times 2 to find out how much we have left. We already know this. We just multiplied it. But remember, we didn't make 66 exactly. So we didn't actually satisfy going into 66 exactly. So we got to figure out how much we have over, left over. So when we do that, we do 2 times 28. We get what we already know, 56. You put the 56 beneath the 66 to subtract and figure out what's left over. How much of this 66 did I not go into? And that's going to be 10. 66 minus 56 is 10. Put the 10 down there. Okay, now 28 can go into 10 how many times? Wait a minute, trick question. 28 can't go into any number lower than 28, so it can't go into 10. So what do we do now? We bring down the next digit in our number, right? So we already took care of 66. The next digit is 9. We are going to bring down that 9, and we are going to say now how many times does 28 go into 109 without going over? So let's do some more multiplication. I already know 28 times 3 is 84, so I'll try that. But I'm, I'm going to try 28 times 4, too. So 28 times 3 is 84. 28 times 4 is 112, so it goes too far. Just barely past 109, but still I can't use it. So I have to use 28 times 3. So how many times does 28 go into 109 without going over? The answer is 3. Where do I put the 3? I put the 3 above the 9 that I brought down to make 109. Okay, we're running out of room, so let's give us some more room. Wow, magic. Okay, now we're going to do the same process. We're going to multiply 28 times 3 to figure out how much we have left. How much of that 109 didn't we cover, didn't we take care of? We already know 28 times 3 is 84 because we found it. That's how we figured out we needed 3. So what are we going to do? Same thing, put 84 under 109 and subtract to figure out what's left over. What didn't we take care of? 109 minus 84 is 25. And so we're going to put that underneath. Now, we have to figure out how many times can 28 go into 25? Ah, trick question again. 28 can't go into 25 because 28 can't go into any number lower than 28. So we need to bring down the very last digit in the number, right? We still have one digit we haven't accounted for. So we're going to take this one and we're going to bring it down. And now we'll figure out how many times 28 goes into 251 without going over. All right, well, I know 28 times 10 is 280 because it's easy multiplying by 10s. So 280 is too big, right? 280 is too big. So I'm going to try 28 times 9, but I have a bad feeling. 28 times 9 is just a bit too big. It's 252 and we need 251 which means we're going to have to use 28 times 8. So 28 goes into 251 eight times without going over, right? 28 times 8 is the winner. So we put 8 up top in our answer. And now we have to do what we have done so many times before. We have to multiply 28 times 8 to figure out how much we have left over. But we know it's 224. So we take that 224 and we put it underneath the 251 and we subtract. So 251 minus 224 is 27. Put that down there. Now, we don't have any numbers left to take. Right? There's no digits left in 6,691. So we have used all the digits. So 27 is literally left over. It's not going to go anywhere. 28 does not go evenly into 6,691, right? I could make 238 groups of 28 out of 6691, but I would have leftovers. So in division, we call leftovers remainders. 28 doesn't go into this 6691 evenly. There's 27 left over, right? So that 27, we have to do something with it. It's a remainder, and we could do one of two things with it. Sometimes we can just write remainder with an R in front of it. We could just write 6,691 divided by 28 is 238R27, meaning there are 27 left over. That last group has 27, not 28 in it, okay? But the direction said multiply to check our answers. And we really can't multiply 28R27 or 238R27 by something, right? We can't do anything with that. So we are going to have to write our answer or write our remainder as a fraction. It's not as bad as it sounds, okay? So to write the remainder as a fraction, you're simply going to take that remainder, you're going to take 27, 
and you're going to write it as a fraction over 28 because that last group has 27 out of the 28 needed, right? That's all that means. So we're going to write 6,691 divided by 28 equals 238 and 27 28 I know you're thinking this is now awful and I wish I never asked how to do this problem, but it's not that bad. When we check our answer, all we're going to do is take this mixed number and write it as an improper fraction. So let's take the mixed number and let's write it as an improper fraction. Remember how to do that. We simply say 28 times 238 plus 27 and put it over 28. So we get 28 times 238 plus 27 all over 28. 28 times 238, by the magic of a calculator, I'm sure you will do this by hand, is 6,664 plus 27 all over 28. Now let's just add them, and we get 6,691 divided by or over 28. Let's give ourselves a little more room. That number seems awfully familiar. Remember in the very beginning we said we could write division as a fraction? That's because a fraction bar means divide. This number right here, we started out with 6,691 divided by 28. That is the same as saying 6,691 over 28, or as a fraction. It is also the same thing as writing it horizontally, 6,691 divided by 28. So our answer checks out. Our answer gave us the problem we started with when we divided it, right, when we multiplied it. We multiplied to check our answer. We didn't really multiply. We just took our remainder that was a fraction and turned it into an improper. But that's really the only way to do these. You have to make sure you get back to the problem you started with. And we did. Okay. So if you still have questions, you know what to do. Send them to us. You should be subscribed to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash solve my math homework, and we'll take care of them for you. Till next time, take it easy.